Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he, he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right and and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood post anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire the banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, 
destroyed completely by the blood death of Christ. O oh, 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 happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you, that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may preserve undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. And in these the last days has sent his, us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss. 
while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened, God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on, of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, 
I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed 
understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning. Accept that. At the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lectura del Libro del Éxodo En aquellos días dijo el Señor a Moisés, ¿Por qué sigues clamando a mí? Diles a los israelitas que se pongan en marcha, y tú, alza tu bastón, extiende tu mano sobre el mar y divídelo, para que los israelitas entren en el mar sin mojarse. Yo voy a endurecer el corazón de los egipcios para que los persigan y me cubriré de gloria a expensas del faraón y de todo su ejército, de sus carros y jinetes. Cuando me haya cubierto de gloria a expensas del faraón, de sus carros y jinetes, los egipcios sabrán que yo soy el Señor. El ángel del Señor que iba al frente de las huestes de Israel se colocó tras ellas, y la columna de nubes que iba adelante también se desplazó y se puso a sus espaldas entre el campamento de los israelitas y el campamento de los egipcios. La nube era tinieblas para unos y claridad para otros, y así los ejércitos no trabaron contra durante toda la noche. Moisés extendió la mano sobre el mar, y el Señor hizo soplar durante toda la noche un fuerte viento del este, que secó el mar y dividió las aguas. Los israelitas entraron en el mar y no se mojaban mientras las aguas formaban una muralla a su derecha y a su izquierda. Los egipcios se lanzaron en su persecución y toda la caballería del faraón, sus carros y jinetes, entraron tras ellos en el mar. Hacia el amanecer, el Señor miró desde la columna de fuego y humo al ejército de los egipcios y sembró entre ellos el pánico. Trabó las ruedas de sus carros, de suerte que no avanzaban sino pesadamente. Dijeron entonces los egipcios, huyamos de Israel porque el Señor lucha en su favor contra Egipto. Entonces el Señor le dijo a Moisés, extiende tu mano sobre el mar para que vuelvan las aguas sobre los egipcios, sus carros y sus jinetes. Y extendió Moisés su mano sobre el mar, y al amanecer, las aguas volvieron a su sitio, de suerte que al huir, los egipcios se encontraron con ellas, y el Señor los derribó en medio del mar. Volvieron las aguas y cubrieron los carros, a los jinetes y a todo el ejército de Faraón, que se había metido en el mar para perseguir a Israel. Ni uno solo se salvó. Pero los hijos de Israel caminaban por lo seco en medio del mar. Las aguas les hacían muralla a derecha e izquierda. Aquel día salvó el Señor a Israel de las manos de Egipto. Israel vio a los egipcios muertos en la orilla del mar. Israel vio la mano fuerte del Señor sobre los egipcios. Y el pueblo temió al Señor y creyó en el Señor, en Moisés, su siervo. Entonces Moisés y los hijos de Israel cantaron este cántico al Señor. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor.
to my God who delivers me from death into life, into freedom through the sea. I will sing to my God who delivers me from death into life, into freedom through the sea. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. 
For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord.
this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Romanos Hermanos, todos los que hemos sido incorporados a Cristo Jesús por medio del bautismo, hemos sido incorporados a su muerte. En efecto, por el bautismo fuimos sepultados con él en su muerte, para que así como Cristo resucitó de entre los muertos, por la gloria del Padre, así también nosotros llevemos una vida nueva. Porque si hemos estado íntimamente unidos a Él por una muerte semejante a la suya, también lo estaremos en su resurrección. Sabemos que nuestro viejo yo fue crucificado con Cristo, para que el cuerpo del pecado quedara destruido, a fin de que ya no sirvamos al pecado, pues el que ha muerto queda libre del pecado. Por lo tanto, si hemos muerto con Cristo, estamos seguros de que también viviremos con Él, pues sabemos que Cristo, una vez resucitado de entre los muertos, ya nunca morirá. La muerte ya no tiene dominio sobre él, porque al morir, murió al pecado de una vez para siempre. Y al resucitar, vive ahora para Dios. Lo mismo ustedes. Considérense muertos al pecado y vivos para Dios en Cristo Jesús, Señor nuestro. Palabra de Dios.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed. Happy Easter. Today we celebrate the gift of the resurrection, this day that we have anticipated with great longing and the great gift of Jesus defeating death. Jesus defeats that which most and all of the world may be fearing death itself, Jesus has overcome. And through his resurrection, we celebrate that darkness has given way to light, that despair has given way to hope, and that death has given way to resurrection. You know, our faith gives us the answer to the fundamental question that is raging throughout the world right now. And that is, do we fear death? Is there hope for life after death? Can death be defeated? And the answer to that question in Jesus Christ is yes. Yes, Jesus has defeated death itself. You know, we haven't um, had to look at the headlines of the day and say, let me figure out how, how might my faith be able to maybe address these challenges? Because we're not sure. No, our faith has anticipated the fear of the day In Jesus Christ, it's as if the times we're living in are times in which we hunger for the very answers that we celebrate tonight. How beautiful that is, that we have the answers right here, right now. Today we're going to take a look at the the salvation history, what it means when we say Jesus has defeated death, the, the gift of the resurrection, and then how is it that we should respond. You know, let's just go back a few weeks ago. I mean, on Ash Wednesday, think about it, before, you know, the world went in shutdown mode. When we received the ashes, there were two expressions, two expressions. 
One is, remember you are death, remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Now, the purpose of that is that when we entered into Lent, and we do this every year, and it's, it's part of our faith, the very purpose of entering into Lent is to have a ritual that reminds us that this life isn't all there is, that our life is passing. And so we're reminded of that at the very beginning of Lent. Well, Lent this year, uh, we all certainly have been reminded of our mortality. What's the second expression that we pray at Ash Wednesday when the ashes are put on? The second one, it gives us our response. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. So if we know our mortality, if we know that at some time death is coming for all of us, now is the time to repent, to turn away from sin, and to turn to Jesus. And he's there waiting for us with open arms. You know, it was really that first weekend after Lent, I was helping with a youth retreat, and uh, the gift that they gave me for having helped out at this retreat was a book. And it's, it's a common expression, memento mori, you know, remember death. And so on the book, this is a Lenten book, there, there's like a skull on the cover because it's, it's meant to kind of shock us into thinking, um, wow, that someday that'll be us. Now, when that time is coming, we don't know. But think about it now so that you can be ready for that moment. And it, it's not that we fear death, but we could all live our lives without ever reflecting on where we're headed, on where we're going, on what our eternal destiny is, on what awaits us. We can live our lives so distracted, so preoccupied with passing things, thinking that we're invincible and missing the biggest question we need to answer in our lives. And that is, will we say yes to Jesus? Now, uh, within the last year, just about a year ago this time, I, I think it was, uh, I had a friend of mine and her elderly mother was near death. Now, what was beautiful about this time is that her mother was really ready for that moment, had received the last sacraments of the church, had made amends with all the family members, was waiting to see God, was still cogent. I mean, had no thoughts of, you know, suicide or depression or anything like that. But then after that was just waiting and saying, you know, I, I'm ready. I, I, I'm really ready. And, and in fact, I got, I got the call from her daughter again, and, and then it became almost like, how do I help my mom? Because she is so ready, and the time hasn't come. But every day she's just saying, Lord, I'm yours. I place myself in your hands. And within a few days later, the Lord took her into his loving arms. See, if we can approach that moment that everybody fears with a kind of peacefulness and a confidence, that's just a beautiful way to live. I mean, make no mistakes. We protect and defend life in all its stages. We want all of our lives to be valuable and healthy and vibrant, and Catholic health care is remarkable around the world as we seek to meet these needs so that everyone can have that dignity in this life. But we do so that, so that this life 
can have the meaning that God wants it to have. So how could somebody have that much faith to just say, I'm ready, Lord, take me. We get the readings today. We get this salvation history. Now, uh, what's beautiful about uh, the readings that we hear, what's beautiful about all the passages is that today we have lots of readings, okay? And what we're receiving is all of salvation history in a condensed fashion. Uh, and one way of thinking about the Old Testament and, and of our faith is we, like we constantly remind ourselves of all that God has done. So, so the Jewish people would not only remember, of course, what had happened, but they would keep telling each other and they, and they would tell God, they would say, God, remember how, how awesome it was? You know, the good things that you did? Um, remember how in incredible it was when you saved us? Remember that? And it's not in telling God what he did that, you know, God's feeling any better about himself. Uh, but it's reminding us of the way we were saved. So we start out, uh, God created the world perfectly, beautifully. He entrusted it to us. He gave it to us. And so in that giving, he said, it's all good and it's all yours. It's all good, and it's all yours. And so the perfection of God's love expressed in his creation is a great gift that we hear in the book of Genesis. We, of course, turned away from that perfection and kind of said, God, will do it on our own. You know, thanks, but no thanks. And found ourselves in the Israelis, the Israelite people enslaved. And so then we hear in the book of Exodus, if creation is in Genesis, Exodus is freedom. And so the enslavement that the Israelites had, the answer to that was given as they passed through the Red Sea. And so, you know, they were trapped in death, but then God saved them through those waters. And later on, St. Paul will say those waters are for us uh, an image of baptism, that they're an image of how it is that God saved us through the waters of baptism. So God saving us in Exodus, which becomes a prefiguration for what we'll hear in the book of Romans. And so then ultimately uh, we turned away again, but in Isaiah we hear this, just, this call of the Lord asking us to return to our first love. Isaiah just saying, the Lord has given him these, these words to say to us, come back to me, come back to me. So God created the world perfectly and then sin distorted it and so death entered into the world. And so from that moment forward, we were afraid, but God kept saving us and then he kept calling us to him. And ultimately, the most beautiful call is the call of his son Jesus who comes down here and if we were afraid of death says, you know, I got this. I got this. God has sent me on a mission and I'm going to take all your sins, all the wounds, all the death and despair and destruction and I'm going to put it on my shoulders and I am going to carry this to the cross and it is going to be put to death, as will I. But that's not the end of the story. And the beautiful miracle that we celebrate in Easter is that all those fears that we might have, all those sins that we might have on our shoulders, Jesus takes them. Jesus takes them to the cross, and then with the resurrection, do not be afraid, we're told. Do not be afraid. It's Jesus. He has risen from the dead. Jesus is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. How beautiful. How beautiful. St. Peter, who had denied the Lord three times, would eventually give his life 
because he expressed that he knew that he knew that he had seen the risen Jesus. So how do we understand the resurrection? St. Paul in the Romans gives us this explanation. So he says, okay, so here's how it works. Are you unaware, so he's saying this to the Romans, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So, so in a moment, we're going to bless the waters. I'm going to bless the waters that will be used for baptism. And so what does this mean? It says like, so don't you get it? So if you were baptized with Jesus, you were baptized into his death. So it means, you know, when we go through the waters of baptism, just like the Israelites were saved through the waters of the Red Sea, just as Jesus experienced death, we come out of that. And so it, we were indeed buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. Jesus is resurrected and we hold on to his hands and he can take us through death to life everlasting when we hold on to him. And so those waters of baptism become life-giving waters for us it's as if the whole universal equation that got distorted centuries ago is now brought to fulfillment with the resurrection of Jesus. So what does this mean? It means that right now we live our lives in response to this great love knowing that death is not the end, knowing that when we place our faith in Jesus and we say yes to him, remember, repent and believe in the gospel, repent and believe in the gospel, repent and believe in the gospel. When we do that, when we turn away from our sins and we turn to Jesus, we receive the waters of baptism, we're renewed to the sacrament of reconciliation, we receive his strength and his anointing, then our lives are infused with meaning right now because we know that God has put us here for a purpose that we have an eternal destiny. And so our job is not just to kind of, you know, run out the clock and say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to get my heavenly reward, so I'm just going to stand pat until that happens. No, it's, it gives us a meaning and a purpose and a hopefulness now. It, it gives us strength to say, I am going to reach out to my brothers and sisters in need, just the way Jesus saved me, and I'm going to help them. And I'm going to show them the love that Jesus showed me. And I'm going to give them every opportunity to say yes to Jesus the way that I have. Of all years, the time is now. <laughs> the, the time is now to, to say yes to Jesus. Don't, don't delay. Uh, we have a world that's hungry for answers, a world that wants to know if there's hope. And there is hope. There is hope in Jesus who strengthens us now and who gives us his purpose, our purpose, which is to love him and to bring others close to the depths of his love. Now, I'm going to give you two examples of, um, of some people who I have, uh, in this last week, really reflected upon or heard about who who said yes to this love in different ways and at different times in their lives you know this would be the night that i could point to some people in the church and i could say see the people here they're they're going to be baptized they've said yes to jesus and they want to receive the grace of baptism now under these current circumstances things are delayed but we've got people out there hungry and waiting to receive the gift of baptism. Let me tell you about a friend of mine, um, known him for the better part of probably 32, 33 years. Met him when we were in our, in our early 20s. And in his mid-20s, I was just struck by uh, the way that he looked at life infused with this knowledge of God's love. So he was, you know, about 25 years old or so. And, uh, 
And at that time, he, he just said, you know, these 25 years have gone pretty fast. And if I look ahead in terms of life expectancy, I, you know, I'll probably have two more of these sprints, you know, like a couple more of these 25 year runs in me. And so those are probably going to go by pretty quickly too. So I, I really better get right what God wants me to do because that's not a lot of time. And so he had considered a priestly vocation, really prayed about that, then ultimately um, had the call to marriage. And in all that discernment, like what he was just saying is, uh, how, can I, how can I know and do God's will? Um, I, you know, in, in my 20s, I wasn't thinking about the end of my life. You know, it just wasn't, it wasn't where my head was. Um, but this is someone, you know, we say, remember your dust, and if the dust you shall return. This is somebody who said, well, that time is going to come. Like 50 years is not that long, and that time is going to come, so, so I'm going to get ready. And he lived a life of fidelity. Uh, this, the sad news, on the one hand, and it is sad news, is that he passed away this week in his mid-50s. And that, for all of us who knew him, is a great loss. And so we don't diminish the pain of the loss of someone like that. Jesus wept when Lazarus died. And yet, I found myself this week going back to what he said 32 years ago, or whenever it was, 22 years ago. And, and uh and that was that he knew his time was short. And he just wanted to be ready. And, and he was. He was. And that knowledge that God had a plan for him did not make him lazy. It made him enthused for every day that he had. And he used that time well. I mean, right now we have a world that's afraid of facing our mortality. Now we want to do all we can to help and to, to put an end to these destructive diseases. But we should all think about being ready for that moment so that we don't despair. Because the Lord has a plan for us. It's never too late. The time is now. Let me share with you one more story of somebody responding to this uh, this, this love of God. I had another friend of mine, this happened some time ago. In fact, I communicated with him this week and I said, you know, I, I, can you tell me the story one more time? I think I, re I remember this. And so he shared it with me again and I mentioned it'd be something I might bring into my conversation with you tonight. Um, it was his grandfather. His grandfather had never been baptized and had seen some things in his life that were pretty tough. Uh, he fought in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, he lost two brothers in World War II. And this weighed on him, likely, in a way that as his grandson and their, their family would go to, go to Mass every week and they'd always say, Grandpa, do you want to go? And he'd say, no. He'd say, no. Um, was never baptized. Go to breakfast with them afterwards, but yeah, this this church thing, this God thing, this Jesus thing wasn't for him. It uh, he always said no. Eventually, he was transitioned to live with the family in hospice at home. And still the family would say, you know, um, do, you, do, you want, do you want to see Jesus? That's, that's kind of how they simplified it. And my friend's mother said, you know, do you want to see Jesus? And he, he didn't respond. He was 84 years old, 84 years old, had never been baptized consistently when offered had said I I'm, I'm keeping Jesus 
you know, at bay. But that work that somehow the Lord did in his heart, at, at 84 years old, uh, my friend's mother went to grandfather who was in, in the house, who was in the bed, and said, do you want to see Jesus? And then a couple days later, uh, in the morning, he said, I want to see Jesus. And so they asked him if he wanted to be baptized. And he did. We should all know how to do this in an emergency because any one of us can. Someone's in danger of death. My friend's mother you know, took the water in the home, poured the water on his head and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the family says that at that moment, tears came down his eyes. They said in their, in their mind's eye, these were like, they looked like diamond crystals com coming out as he, as he wept. He had waited all that time but it wasn't too late. He received those loving waters and the healing embrace of Jesus. And then he was ready. And that very night, he passed away, ready to see Jesus. The goal of our lives is to say yes to that love of Jesus. The goal of our lives is to bring as many people as possible with us into that loving relationship with Jesus. We don't need to wait. We don't need to fear. We just need to open our hearts. The gift of the resurrection. Repent and believe in the gospel. Accept the gift of the resurrection. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water.
For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant, and you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and as seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the shepherds of souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, 
that it may truly know the peace given by the risen Jesus Christ, especially during this time of turmoil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who anticipated to be received into the church this night and in the coming weeks, for their comfort and consolation as they wait unexpectedly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are suffering from COVID-19, for essential workers and all those who have died from the virus, that they might find peace and those who are sick may be healed and essential workers may find confidence and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that the Diocese of Gary may bear, may bear witness with great confidence to the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our intentions that we remember now. Especially for all those who have died, that they may be raised up on the last day and enter into the heavenly kingdom with the heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being in paying their homage to you, the living God, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, 
and approve this offering in every respect. So make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them Through whom you can make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by the Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before extending the final blessing, I just want to once again wish all of us here, all of you viewing on our live stream, a happy and blessed Easter. There's a lot going on in the world. I don't need to tell you that. But more than anything else, what's going on in the universe is the eternal love of Jesus for us. Tonight's the night to say yes to that love, to do so without fear. And when we say yes to that love, the fear gets dissipated in our hearts and we can do what we need to do to love our neighbor, to share the good news of Jesus with others. Tonight is not a night of fear. It's not a night of despair. It's a night of joy. It's a night of hope. We have our Savior Jesus. He's got us in the palm of his hands. We can have a joyful and blessed Easter. So let's enter into that with great love. It's never too late. The time is now to say yes to the love of Jesus, to say yes to the gift of the resurrection. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.